Qualifying for Round 8 at Mount Motorama was disappointing for Felix, but his championship rival Nova wasn't here at all. Instead, he was represented by reserve driver Maverick, who pounced on Felix from further back. But at Turn 2, Felix snatched the position back. Dawson was doing a fine job of holding on to third position, but got it wrong into the S's and was overtaken by both VLX drivers, X11 and his own teammate Wittmann. Maverick was all over the place, taking out 93 after losing positions through the second lap, but he did at least wait for 93 to recover. This gave Felix room to breathe, and eager to expand his advantage, the German kept up a close pursuit on Dawson, taking risks and kicking up dust. X11 was encouraged, but in the run up the hill and in the treacherous slipstream behind Felix's Audi, he erred and hit the wall and lost his chance. Dawson and Felix soon escaped to continue their battle for fifth alone. Dawson found himself right behind Judoka a lap later. Judoka managed to stay in control of the situation and opted for the undercut, putting Dawson under pressure to squeeze all he could from his worn tyres. DJ was following Def Sun on lap 8 and saw that the wily Canadian was going for a one-stop strategy just like he had at Spa. This was also Dawson's time to stop, but Judoka had fallen behind. Defsan just had to keep his cool, and it'd be his race. DJ came out with Felix right on top of him, and conceded fourth place. Lap 10, and Judoka was fighting X11 in the midfield. The two duelled closely for more than one lap. Leading the race by now, JL came in for his second stop. Defsun, having already made his single stop, sailed by while JL was being refuelled. Toward the end of the race, DJ was chasing Judoka for third, with Dawson hounding them both. It was touch and go all the way down the mountain, but they fared without mishap and hurtled down Conrod straight altogether. Dawson went in to pass DJ, but couldn't quite do it. Judoka then made a surprisingly late pit stop, and Dawson seized the moment. He locked up his brakes into Hell Corner, and DJ bounced off him into the grass. Lap 15 and Felix was chasing Judoka. Pestered by Felix, Judoka made a critical error and hit the wall after the dipper. Defsun, once again having pulled off a one-stop strategy, crossed the line to win round 8, scoring 81 points. The LX driver JL came second, and Dawson, after a hard race full of battling, came to a well-earned third. Division 2 began as a race full of noise and fury. His Madelik took the lead, followed by Chompy, who was here subbing for Neutron. His teammate Fulness had a hairy moment going into Griffin's Bend, losing out to Bruno, another substitute driver, and Mop nearly had him as well. The good doctor was looking fragile and downhill, and on lap two he hit the wall. Mop got his chance when Fulness missed his breaking point at the chase, and as Fulness faltered, the renegade ran for it. Thanatos slipped by as well. His Madelik pitted on lap five, with Chompy and Bruno now fighting for the lead. His Madelik emerged right behind Fulness and remained in his wake for the rest of the lap. Chompy, Binary Theory, and Bruno went into pit but his Madelik narrowly passed them. Thanatos kept the lead, but out of the cutting, Mop lost control and smacked the wall. He recovered in time to hold on to fourth position just ahead of Bruno, who picked up a shortcut penalty and did not pay it off soon enough and was further penalised. On lap 12, his Madelik had made his second pit stop and emerged just ahead of Binary Theory. Mop was still leading Bruno, but at the top of the mountain, Mop again slipped up and lost his focus such that he completely fouled up at Forrest's elbow and did not finish the race. His Madelik, having performed without error, was the clear winner of the second division, and although Bruno crossed the line second, his penalty caused his position to be exchanged with that of fellow reserve driver Chompy. I have no words for the sheer madness of Group 3, so I will let the following clips speak for themselves.
Group 4 had a far more orderly base, introducing two newcomers, Infinite and Chromedix. Infinite started on pole and had it out with Daniel on the first lap, where they went neck and neck through Griffin. Infinite had the advantage going up the mountain, slammed the wall at Frog Hollow and found himself fourth behind Nick and Chromedix. Way back at the tail end of the field, teammates Babel and Tony vied for position, with Babel's taking the four. As the race went on, he undertook a meteoric rise through the midfield, and with a mixture of strategy, daring and damn good luck, found himself in the running for second with just over three laps to go. Babbles passed Infinite on lap 15, but it was still far from settled, with Infinite making a move to pass at Murray's corner. They went side by side into Griffin's the following lap, seeming evenly matched. Daniel won by a clear margin, and with just one corner to go, Infinite put everything he had into one last ditch effort to pass. But with Babbles holding a defensive inside line, Infinite would have to take the outside, and Babbles held on, taking second position, with Infinite finishing third. Group 5 was jam packed into turn 1, with plenty of jostling all around. Maltese newcomer Ben started on pole and kept the lead, with Billocks close behind. More interesting was Rafe's progress. Starting from the back, he dispatched driver after driver like a knife through hot butter, in fourth place at the halfway point. Ben and Aldriolan were battling for the lead, both on a different strategy to Billocks. Rafe found himself up against Embar, who was putting up much more of a fight. Although Rafe had got past, Embar wasn't letting him go so easily. Out in front, Ben and Billocks caught up to lap Rappi, but Billocks lost far more time trying to get past the ailing backmarker. Billocks soon caught back up, and the two of them were once again neck and neck. But at the end of lap 15, Ben completely misjudged his line and went off, granting Billocks victory. Ben was able to retain second place, and Autista came in third. Defsun shoots up to third overall with another decisive win, with Felix gaining over his rival teammate Nova. One Racing Esports win a double podium in Division 2, and Neutron now has enough points to join Division 1. The Group 3 winners were all newcomers, and we'll hopefully see more of them in Season 2. While Daniel proved to be an insurmountable Goliath in Group 4, Babbles crucially made enough points to join Division 2. Group 5 saw another excellent performance by Billux, who also makes it into Division 2 for the Grand Finale. Now with only one round left to go, all eyes will be on Felix and Nova, only two points between them, with Defsun and Judoka fighting for third. The second division is distinctively stratified, with Ismadalik, Pamigo and Dr. LJ duking it out in just a few days. In the lower division we can expect to see more drivers scrapping for position in the final round, with many drivers keen to make an impression and to de demonstrate their potential. We'll have to see where the chips land when the final round takes place on January the 5th. Meanwhile, we've had a livery design contest! Five drivers submitted their designs, and the winner... Autista! It's a very jolly Lamborghini, wrapped up like a present with a red ribbon. And it looks like someone's already started tearing it open. Nice touch with the 25 as well. Good show. Not quite done yet, folks. The top driver for each manufacturer region, Atlantic, European and Asian, will be awarded a copy of Formula XD when Season 1 concludes in January. It's a game where you run your own racing team, directing R&D, securing contracts and issuing orders on the track. There are all kinds of perils and pitfalls, gadgets and gizmos, trials and tribulations, and frankly, you're on your own. I'm also working on a pretty special update you can expect to see in 2020. If you've fantasised about being a slightly less sociopathic version of Frank Williams, this is right up your alley. Can you manage?